the design of planned attacks on buildings inside the U.S. and how operatives uh, were directed to carry them out. That is valuable information who have the for those responsibility of us to protect the American people. He told us the operatives have been instructed to ensure that the explosives went off at a high po a point that was high enough to prevent people trapped above from escaping. He gave us information that helped uncover Al Qaeda cells' efforts to obtain biological weapons. This is Building 7, a 47-story skyscraper that fell on the afternoon of September 11. The government says that fire brought it down. However, 1,500 architects and engineers concluded it was a controlled demolition. Over 6,000 of my fellow service members have given their lives. And thousands of my fellow first responders are dying. I'm not a conspiracy theorist. I'm a structural engineer. I'm a New York City correction officer. I'm an Air Force pilot. I'm a father who lost his son. We're Americans. And we deserve... I lost my husband. My son. My uncle. My nephew. September 11, 2001. Most people don't know a third tower fell that day. The government says fire brought it down. The collapse of World Trade Center 7 was primarily due to fires. I, along with 1,400 other architects and engineers, have found the government's conclusion to be physically impossible. 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 We need the truth about what happened that day. Go to RememberBuilding7.org. Why it fell, why it matters, and what you True TV, Douglas Bickford, reporting live from Spokane, Washington. My phone number is 360-980-5397 for any of you that want to talk to me. We are being sprayed, folks. Uh, the evidence is there. Uh, the evidence that you can see with your own eyes is just uh, look up wherever you live in the United States, uh, in any country that you live in. It is happening. It's happening in Mexico. It's happening in Europe. It's happening... Uh, everywhere uh, <clears throat> but anyway the, the question is who is spraying us because we know what they're spraying us with uh, which is barium aluminum and strontium oxides those are just three of the things that we know for sure that they're spraying us and that's thanks to uh, Michael Murphy and what in the world are they spraying we know why they're spraying us because of Michael Murphy and uh, his documentary why in the world are they spraying but now the question is, who is spraying us? So I'm going to try to uh, explain that to you in this video. So uh, this, I don't know how many parts this can be, but this is part one. to the Monday edition of the Power Hour. Just a little tongue-in-cheek stuff going on there. Anybody living near a uh, an airport can relate to that. And that's uh, so what we're going to be talking about a little bit today. This is Dave Von Kloys. And Joyce Riley. And the subject is going to be the purpose of chemtrail aerosol. A.C. Griffith was associated with the National Security Agency. He carried a top-secret clearance, a cryptographic clearance. And in more recent times, he was associated with the Central Intelligence Agency operations. 
He was married to a lady lawyer, judge, and his father-in-law was the Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Virginia. He is with us today, and we want to say thank you very much, A.C. Griffith, for joining us to talk about the personal purpose of chemtrail aerosol. Thank you, sir, for joining us on the Power Hour today. Uh, thank you, Joyce. It's, uh, it, it's indeed a pleasure to be with you today. Well, I must tell you, I think the listeners are going to get more today than they probably imagined, given the fact that you have some information that most people do not have access to, and probably information we would just as soon not know. However, knowledge is power, and we thank you for joining us, and uh, I know that you have listened to the Power Hour in the past, and have been very supportive of the activities and providing information to the Power Hour. Uh, let's do talk just as much as you want to talk about what your past experience was all about, sir. I spent uh, a couple of days making talking points uh, to make a, a map, a guide map of how to present this to you. It is such a big topic. It's uh, very difficult to, to know where to grab it to begin. Several years ago, I got a telephone call from Mike Blair at the uh, Spotlight newspaper in Washington, now called the American Free Press. He asked me to uh, help work with him on the story of the white trails coming out of the airplanes. And uh, time has gone by, I guess that was eight or nine years ago. We actually got inside the program. We're the only people in the world that actually got inside of that program. When you, say you, got, when you say you got inside that program? The uh, aerosol program, the chemtrail program. You're talking about information on the inside of this program. I'm talking about actually getting inside the program at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base where it's being managed. Wow. And we actually got into some of the people that were were dissatisfied from within the program, and they divulged a lot of the acronyms and the purpose of the program and so on. And that's the the only way that um, anybody could ever have uh, broken the uh, the secrecy of this program. Okay. We know that people have died over this program. People have been hit to keep them quiet. And we know that other things have happened to keep people in this program. One of the key people that designed the aerosol, the barium salt aerosol, was set up by people in the Reagan administration, and he's now sitting in federal penitentiary. They still go to him to ask him questions, but yet he is uh, in the prison. Uh, that is a little unnerving, isn't it? Yes, it is, absolutely. That the man that designed the barium salt aerosol is sitting in a prison. Well, it would sort of make sense. Now, I, before we go any further, let's just define what you believe to be the, the, the aerosol crime issue. I mean, just what is this aerosol that we're discussing? I mean, it comes out of aircraft, we believe, uh, or we know, and that is the basis of a program that is set up to not do good to this country, but probably do harm. Now, I remember we had a couple of people on the program recently. You contacted me after that, and you said, Joyce, some of, these, some of the information was accurate, some of it was inaccurate. But what we do know is there's something in the skies that should not be there. The uh, white trail is not coming out of the engines. It's coming out of aerosol units on the aircraft. In the very beginning, the early days, the aircraft uh, were flying relatively low, 10,000 feet or below, and they were developing, uh, developing the program. They were mostly contract aircraft, mostly CIA aircraft. Now the program has been expanded, and commercial airliners, airliners have been outfitted with uh, aerosol units that are controlled through computer systems and satellites to dispense a barium salt mixture. It's a mixture of barium salt, not coming out of the engine. It's coming out of aerosols. And we have checked on information. We do confirm that the name of the project is Project Cloverleaf in the aircraft industry. It is very secretive. It is the most secretive thing I have ever encountered. People have died over this, talking about it. I listened to the, uh, uh, your broadcast just a few minutes ago. The general was on saying that uh, he is very patriotic and uh, he, is, uh, he feels compelled to speak out, and that's exactly the same way I feel. I am very patriotic. I was born before the Second World War. I'm an old guy, and I come from that generation and that mindset. 
this is my country and I see my country being dissolved my country is being destroyed right in front of my eyes and the people are being hurt and that's why I consented to be on your radio program today I know uh, you will remember that you've asked me many times to uh, to do this and I've been very reluctant but uh, it's time it's time to speak out and go public with these things well that is correct I have asked uh, AC to be on this program many many times and uh, you do this I think with a considerable amount of uh, risk to your own life do you not yes that's right so that's there right. there are people who have lost their lives people who are now in prison as a result of divulging this information um, now you were as you say very patriotic you still are very patriotic and you were doing this out of patriotism out of love for your country as I know you are that's correct that's correct you know Joyce I'm in uh, Richmond Virginia just a few miles from the spot that Patrick Henry stood in 1775 he was talking to Thomas Jefferson George Washington George with and, and others in st. John's Church and they were talking about the oppression coming from England at the time and he was a little uh, uh, put out at them for not deciding uh, a course and he concluded his speech to them with I know not what course others may choose but as for me give me liberty or give me death and I think we're approaching a time like that mm -hmm. don't you oh absolutely there's no question in my mind I uh, I talked with you about a discussion I had had with a military member who admitted to me well first of all he did not believe that there was such a program however he was stationed at one of the bases where I knew some of the operations were taking place on this aerosol uh, clouding or, or aerosol dispersion or whatever you want to call it and I had him go to the person who we knew was in charge at that base at that time and he did in fact confirm that the person that uh, admitted to some of the information that we're about to talk about here or that some of the information regarding this program and he was so disillusioned when I talked with his military officer he said I am leaving the military Joyce I did not believe you when you told me about Gulf War illness and then he said I became ill then I found out the doxycycline was true and then now I have found out about this spraying issue and he said I can no longer serve the military well let's talk about this uh, subject of what the aerosol program is um, and where you how you were able to obtain this information uh, first choice if you will allow me let me uh, paint a picture a time picture uh, at first you may think it's not related but you will see that it is related so uh, if you will indulge me just a minute let me go back to the Kennedy assassination Do you remember Jim Garrison in New Orleans the uh, DA down there fingered uh, 27 people as being part of the of the plot to kill the president mm -hmm. <clears throat> Carlos Marcello was the major drug dealer in New Orleans and uh, his people were involved now one of the people uh, associated was a man named Barry Seals he was a drug dealer and uh, later a CIA operative the FBI report on Carlos Marcello the big drug dealer and underworld character uh, the FBI report said he made his money selling tomatoes and real estate and that was the FBI evaluation of the number one drug dealer now remember Barry Seals now fast forward to the Watergate break-in in 1972 now I was at the Watergate uh, the, the CIA had a rather large international operation there under under a then they had other foundations under that and, and so on by the way did you know the Catholic Church built the Watergate complex as a real estate